Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft short tutorial. Today we're doing something a little slightly different and I'll just cut right to the chase. You know how we're making that sort of RPG pseudo command block series that we're doing on our channel? Well, I also thought it would be a pertinent time to make a little mini series on how certain commands and arguments work in Minecraft as almost a basics or command blocks 101. I figured that not everyone knew everything that goes into making a command block chain work, especially with some of the more complex commands that we've been working with, so I figured it might be a perfect time to explain how the very basics work. So today we're going to start with the very basics of target selection in Minecraft, or using selectors and tags. Now of course we'll cover a couple of other things like arguments and stuff, but most of those will be covered in a later video. So. Let's start this shorter tutorial. So what exactly are selectors in Minecraft? Well, you've probably seen them before if you've done anything with command blocks or even commands in general in Minecraft. They're these little symbols right here. At P, at A, at R, at E, and at S. There are a couple more if you play on Bedrock Edition and Educational Edition, but these are the ones that are on Java Edition. So you can see that I brought uh, my assistant, Ashley, uh, today, or rather her character, hey, it's me, Bladen, to help with some of the command testing so you can see how some of these selectors work. Now, right now, we are playing on a LAN server, but you could do this on a normal multiplayer server. You could do this single player, although you wouldn't really need to use selectors that often in a single player setting. So we'll just get started with the very first selector at P. So when you're making a command in Minecraft, you generally want to target either a player or an entity uh, so you don't execute the command on everything on your server. So that's where selectors come in. The very first selector, at P, means it will target the closest player. Therefore, if we do a command like this, it's just a simple say command, at P is the closest. So now if you can see in conjunction to the command block right here, if I stand closer than Ashley's character up here and press the button, you can see I get a little chat that says Mudkip Ninja 56 is closest. That's because I'm using the at P selector, meaning the closest player. But if I back up enough, so Ashley becomes the closest one to the command block and I still hit the button, you notice that the game now says, hey, it's me, Bladen is the closest. That's because even though I'm the one pressing the button, the command block just checks for the nearest player to the command block while we use that at P selector, which in this case is Ashley's character. So every time I hit this button, no matter where it's from, it will tell me Ashley's the closest, unless I came back and got closer than she did. And there we go, you can see that I'm the closest. That's pretty much the at P selector in a nutshell, not too much more to go over. It's very useful for when you want specific players to enact sort of automated messages and other things uh, that are the closest in proximity to the command block. For example, if you have a repeating command block set up and you want the nearest player to the command block to play a sound effect when they enter a cave, for example, you could have a little command block underneath the ground, have the nearest player in the command block will execute a sound. That way, only the closest player will hear that spooky cave noise and everyone else behind them will not. So moving right along to the next selector, we have the at A selector. Now this targets all players, not just the closest player, not just any player, it targets all players that are currently connected to the server. Now I'll show you in a little bit how to refine selectors like this with tags and other arguments, but for now, the basics is it just selects every player. So if I go ahead and open this command block to give you guys an example, I have a simple give command right here that will give at A, or all players, 64 diamonds. So if I hit this button, you can see then not only do I get 64 diamonds, if we come over to Ashley here, you can see that she also has a diamond, and trust me, it is 64 diamonds in her inventory that she has been received. Again, not too much more to this command. Uh, this is really useful when you want to have messages announced on your server. You can just at A and tell everyone a daily welcome message. You could give everyone items on your server if you wanted to give everyone a specific item. Or the most common one is being able to teleport all players on a server to you or to other people very quickly. Okay, so so far we've learned how to select the nearest player and how to select all players. But what if we want something kind of in between? Well, that's where the at R command comes in. You see, at R targets a random player. And when I mean random, it is literally random. If you think of a large spinning wheel of all of the connected players' names on your server, whenever you activate a command with at R, it will spin that wheel and just pick one at random. It could pick the same person three times in a row if you execute the command three times, or never pick that person. Entirely random. 
So if we look at the test example command for this, this one's a little more complex, but I just wanted to use it to show you uh, how the random selection works. Right here, you can see we are executing at a random player at R, and we're going to set the block beneath them to glass. So if I execute this command right here, you can see that either Ash or I, the block beneath us, will turn to glass completely randomly. So if I press it, well, it didn't turn under Ash, and you can see if I look down, there is now a glass block underneath me. If I move a little bit forward and press it again, you can see that it also did not execute under Ash this time, it executed under me. If I press it again, this time it executed under Ash. So again, this is a very, very useful selector if you want entirely random odds, if you're giving some sort of lottery away on your server, uh, or if you're just checking if any player is online, you can just use the at R and it will look for any random player. Next up, and this is probably the most useful one for map makers, is the at E selector. Now what this does is it targets a specific entity. So for example, if you want to teleport all pigs on the server to you, you can do so by targeting that entity. Or if you want to get very specific, you can target an entity with a specific name, a specific tag, all sorts of different parameters to be able to execute different commands. So before I get into the example here, Another cool thing that you can do is if you don't provide any specific parameters, the at E will actually target all entities, including players and entities on your server. So you can see that there's some pigs over there, Ashley's right here, and we have our villagers from our previous uh, RPG videos over there. So if I just type slash TP at E to myself, this should teleport every single entity that is loaded in a chunk right now to me. Now you can see all of the pigs around got teleported, Ashley got teleported, you see it includes players, and all of the villagers also got teleported here, our ones previously, Samson, Jerry, the Mad Titan, and a couple of other test villagers or testificates. Now I'm just going to quick teleport everyone over here before it gets uh, too noisy. But you can see that that is what the at E selector does. It allows you to target all entities, but now we're going to get into the specifics. Now you can see that in addition to Ashley over there, we have maybe five or six villagers that are also chilling around. You can use the at E selector to select villagers as an entity. If we pop into the example here, we're having our execute command. We're executing as, here's our selector, at E, and the extra parameters or arguments we're giving it, and I'll get into this one later, type is equal to villager. So we're saying any entities that have the villager type we will then run this command as them. And the command we're gonna run is just to say, hmm, as a villager. So if we hit this button, you see that it executes about seven times. Once for Samson, the Mad Titan, Jerry, and four of our other random villagers that we have over there. It doesn't execute as any of the pigs or any of the players because we specified that the entity we wanted to check for was villagers. So if we do this every single time, it will always be for all seven villagers. This is very useful when you want to test for very specific entities on your server. For example, armor stands. Oftentimes, map creators, including myself, use armor stands as tags or ways to set up different invisible things for a map. If I tag an armor stand uh, with a specific word like red or blue, and then I can test if that entity of an armor stand exists in the location I want, I can then execute commands from there. So this allows you to very, very specifically target any entity you want on your server. But that's enough about the at E selector. Our final selector that we're going to be talking about today is at S. And this one is a bit more specific. The target of the at S selector is actually the entity that was already executing the command. Now let me explain what that means. Usually when you execute a command in Minecraft, you're just executing it on a selector. For example, if I type slash TP at P, the nearest player, and I will teleport myself, I don't know, let's say just two blocks in the air. That's it. We're just teleporting the nearest player two blocks into the air. That's it. Bam, I've been teleported. However, sometimes, such as in my pumpkin tutorials, commands can get a little complex when you want to target specific tags of an individual. That's where the at S selector can come in. So you can see this is a rather long command. Don't worry too much about the actual syntax here. We're just going to talk about the at S selector. So you can see that we're executing as the nearest player whose level is equal to 10. So that's what we want to tag the nearest player as. Their level is equal to 10. And then we want to execute the command at, at S, which is the player already executing the first command. 
What this saves you having to do is instead of typing that you want to execute it at the nearest player with level 10 over and over again, so as at P level 10, at at P level 10, you know, you can just write at S. It's basically shorthand to say, hey, whoever's starting to execute this command, we want to continue executing the command at that person. So that's where at S comes into play. For this example, we're saying the nearest player that is level 10, we're going to run a little particle system at their location. So if I hit this little button, you can see it spawns the totem of undying particles. If I go into F5 mode, you can see that a little better around me. If I move and I can click the button, oh, I can click the button again over here. I can click the button uh, <laughs> again over here, and it follows me around. Again, you can think of at S as sort of shorthand instead of needing to write out your arguments and tags every single time you want to target someone in the same command block. So now you know all about selectors in Minecraft. It allows you to target specific players and entities depending on how close they are, randomly, or even all of them. But what if you want something a little bit more specific? Instead of just targeting the nearest player, what if you want to target the nearest player that has a specific tag or has picked up a certain amount of items? Well, that's where the tag system comes in, and that's what we're going to show you next. So you can think of tags in Minecraft as a sort of label that you can give to any entity you want as a way to sort them or organize them. You can add them with a simple slash tag command in Minecraft, or you can add them as NBT data for other entities. As a short example of how to add a tag, I'll show you what I did with this command block. If you want to sort your players from their star signs, for example, you can give players a tag called Taurus. So if we come into this command block here, you can see the command is as simple as we're going to tag using our selector, the nearest player, and we're going to add the tag Taurus to them. So if I let Ashley be the closest person here and click on this little button, you can see that we've added the Taurus tag to Hey, It's Me Blayton. You can see right there that it has actually gone through as well. Now, I won't have the tag right away. I'll just let Ashley keep it. And then what you can do with those tags is you can execute specific commands based on what players have tags. So if we come over to this command block, let's say that we want to tell tagged players only a certain message. So Ashley has the tag Taurus, I do not. So if I click on this button, you can see that I don't get a message pop up, but Ashley will. However, if I come over and also add the Taurus tag to myself, and I press this button, you can see that I also have the message. My Mercury must be in retrograde right now. Well, that's disappointing. But if we come into the command block, you can see the command we're using is the simple tell command with our at everyone or at all selector. But this time we're adding that their tag has to be equal to Taurus, and then we can say our message. So before when I pressed this button, I didn't have the Taurus tag, but Ashley did. So even though it said all players, it was only all of the players that had the Taurus tag. Now every single time I click this, Ashley and I both have the tag, so we will both get the message. You can see that it is whispering to Ashley and is whispering to myself as well. So that's how to use tags to organize things in Minecraft. But how would you do this in an adventure setting? Well, that's what I like to call action-based tags. Tags that the players can inadvertently give themselves and then you can trigger later on. For example, we have a little lever on a diamond block right here. Let's say that this is in a dungeon and to check that the player that is at the end of the dungeon actually killed the boss and pulled the diamond lever, we can use a tag. So if we come over here, we can see that this command block will tell the nearest player that has the tag diamond lever pulled, congrats. If I press this button, you can see that nothing happens. And if I come into the command block, it says that no player was found. Now keep in mind, we are testing for the nearest player with at P, but we're testing for the nearest player that has this tag that we've given it, diamond lever pulled. Now just as a quick aside, the tags can be whatever you want. I just came up with this on the fly. There's no rhyme or reason. You can use uppercase, lowercase, whatever you want, really. You can name your tags, all sorts of things, as long as you can keep track of them. So I don't have the diamond lever pulled tag. However, if I was in that dungeon and I came over and pulled the lever, you can see that we've now added that tag to myself. So without doing anything else, if I now press this button, you can see that I now have congrats whispered to me in the chat. You can use this system to sort of hide from players when they get given tags, and that way when they get to the end of the dungeon and press the dungeon clear button, it will check to make sure that they have pulled this diamond lever and given themselves the tag to do it, and then you can execute whatever command you want from there. And just so you can see that it works with at A as well, after Ashley has pulled the lever and given herself the dungeon clear diamond pulled lever tag, we can come in here and say, all right, well now we want to give all players with the diamond lever pulled a cookie. 
And now you can see both Ashley and I received a cookie because we pulled the diamond lever. So we had that diamond pulled tag, which is what it's checking for right here at a tag equals diamond lever pulled. Okay. So that's all the simple stuff out of the way. And now for the final example in the video, I'm going to show you the most complex thing that we are going to talk about today, which is giving entities tags and sorting entities by their tags. So when you want to give a different entity a tag that's not a player, it's not as simple as just using the tag command. You're going to have to use NBT data. So if we come into this command block right here, we want to give a new entity this tag right here, group one. So we'll use the summon command. We'll summon a Minecraft B. It'll be two blocks above our little command block right here. And in our NBT data, we're going to add this tags section. And then in this little array right here, the first tag we're going to give it is group one. It's a pretty short, simple command. And if we press this button right here, you're not going to be able to see it. But here's the B. He's going to fly away right now. It has the tag group one. Well, now, how do we check for that? Well, that's where we can use other commands executing by specific entities. And this is what I was talking about earlier. So if we come into this command block right here, we know this B should have the group one tag because we added it when we summoned it. So to test for that, we can teleport using the at E selector or a specific entity and all entities with the tag equal to group one. We want to teleport it 10 blocks above this little command block right here. So the hope is because this little B has the group one tag, Pressing this button will check all entities that are loaded and any that have that group one tag will be teleported above the command block. So if I press this button, you can see that sure enough, the B is actually teleported above the command block. Nothing else is on the server because nothing else has that tag. However, if I quickly give myself the group one tag, just like that, you can see that now even though we're checking for specific entities, we're checking for any entity with the group one tag. And if I press that button, whoa, me and the B will both be teleported to that zone. So therefore, you can use selectors and tags to sort different entities to different locations depending on their tags. And that's it. I wanted to keep this one a little bit shorter because I just wanted to put out the basics of using selectors and tags in Minecraft with command blocks or without command blocks. There are loads of more arguments and parameters that you can add to specifically call different entities and players and things like that. But this was just an introduction to using selectors in general and the tags argument. I'm going to continue this series with other command tutorials to help players understand the basics of certain commands and their parameters so that they can better use command blocks and actually understand what they're typing in when they watch other complex tutorial videos. So if that sort of thing interests you, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe and you got to hit that notification bell to make sure you are notified when those new videos enter your subscription box. And until next time, see ya!